Hello, Joanna. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm the presentation between you and uh, lunch. Yeah, so bear with me. I will make it uh, short and sweet. You will have something to talk about during the lunch. Okay, without uh, further ado, let me kick out. Okay, it's easy. Green, thanks. I can see here. Yeah, recycled material for rotational molding, guys. So, um, how good is that? So, we are not only using virgin material, we can use recycled contents. Um, in today's uh, short presentation, I will be covering uh, what we call, you know, um, a new concept we introduced to the market, replant, as well as, um, you know, the classic way we recycle this and applied off-cut rotor molded part or rejected powder into rotor molding product. And also I will touch base on our revolve renew concept. Okay. So um, I will give you an overview of what we have done back to UK more than 10 years ago. So first one, recycling. Um, as you can see in the screen, there are some uh, milk <coughs> bottles. Uh, so you know they are made out of HDPE. Typically, you won't be able to load more of them. So uh, we develop a concept within metrics. And we're happy to recycle them. So um, I present it as a present technology. It is available now to you guys. Uh, so we're converting single-use plastics, you know, into a long-term application. So um, let's say we need to start saving the world yeah, by recycle these uh, single-use plastics. And uh, of course, for the future, uh, starting from now, we can use bio-based resin. So they are virgin resins. Yeah. So uh, you can use it for. They are made from sustainable resource not this uh, we call the fossil oil as we are <coughs> and uh, of course um, from the past until now we can use the off-cut reject articles and uh, you know and apply float molding product to reuse in our new applications so um, first let me talking about we call present revolve replant concept so um, clock back quite a few years back. So we have been thinking, okay, well, we can you reuse, uh, reject off cut and apply for the molded part. That's excellent. But as an industry, um, we are only 2% of the usage of polyethylene. And uh, even polyethylene is a small part of the plastic industry. So uh, we want to be seen as a, a savior of the world. Yeah, as we make a big articles, relatively bigger than injection flow molding. So can we use non rotor recycled contents? So uh, we started considering, okay, let's be ambitious. We want to use up to 90% in the finishing product of a non rotor and of life, AKA PCR material. Okay, of course, we need to understand the mobility and uh, of this concept. So we first started with LDPE and HDPE. You can get them easily within this country. So there are compounders there to sell you good quality recycled LDPE and HDPE bits in Victoria, in Brisbane, in New South Wales. It's in Australia. It's quite uh, convenient for us to start it. And of course, you know, um, we would love to have a powder our rotor motor customer can use it, you know, and uh, you don't need to worry about the crystallinity, density, the shrinkage, you know, the moldability, the impact. So we would love to give a solution. So a product you can rotor mold straight away in line with your existing mold, your existing application. You don't have to create, uh, oh, we love you to create, to be creative like an Eagle's presentation, you know, but we did, we better start with where we are, so we can you know penetrating the market uh, with this concept. So here, uh, with the help of Mero, uh, I'm presenting you uh, some nice applications in this presentation. Here's the first one, slim 
land tanks. So uh, the question, you know, we sometimes ask, um, I am wishing, you know, the industry would be asked, hey, by the way, you have a recycled application, you have a product, new product, out of a recycled uh, material. How many uh, used milk bottle in your application? You know, that would be a very good point, you know, for you to promote into the market. So, um, I think the team knows how many bottles in it. I can't tell you. We sign an NDA with it. <laughs> yeah, how many recycled bottles? Yeah. And then I'll show you a product later on we made in the lab. Yeah, I have roughly idea how much we put in. Yeah. So, um, of course, for the future concept, so as we started with L, linear low density polyethylene, our roto grade plus LD plus HD. What about non-roto, even non-PE single use plastics? So uh, thinking about it, uh, I find it's, it is hard to save the world, yeah. But glad we started, you know, we're not gonna stop, yeah. So we will carry on saving the world. Okay, next button. Here we go. Um, one of these uh, reblend uh, our product code is 80. Uh, obviously, as you can see, he has 80% uh, non-local recycled PE. So uh, just uh, for your information, um, as a raw material supplier, so we know the UV, we know the AO, we know the slip reagent, we know the anti-static, we know the shrinkage, crystallinity, so we combine our know-how together produced to the market a road multiple powder. And uh, yeah, so at that stage, we were ready to rock and roll. Okay, uh, a few more photos uh, from Merrill. I took this earlier 2021. And uh, yeah, so uh, this colorful application has up to 8% of the non recycled PE in it. So, uh, I did a stand on there, did a bit of dancing, you know, jump and a gun, so tested the quality of the physical performance, yeah. Also, I flip around, look a bit underneath, so normally people would consider, it, oh, that's a bit challenging, yeah, for, even for conventional powders. So, this one looks perfect to me. So, um, as a, a supplier, we don't want to start with one color yet. We have all the colors, so we can visualize existing color, in the market for this uh, replant concept. It's quite straightforward for us. Yeah. Okay, so um, question, you know, how many recycled bread bags, you know, as we're not only using milk bottle, yeah, we're also using fuel, LDP fuel. So um, that's a question we could put forward for your product. You can even have a sticker outside your product in future. Yeah, so, um, People would be asking, you know, okay, you have a high dose, up to 80% of a non roto PE in your material. What's the mechanical performance of this material? You know, did you test it? You know, how did how did it go? So here I'm sharing some of the key data instead of showing you all the curves. You know, as a supplier, as a lab technician, you know, I do cook we call hexangular beans, so you can have a 12 slides of it, we cook two per cycle, so we maybe make a 24 of this, each two of them can give us 24 impact plugs, so we draw the curve, Ju showed that yesterday, so we calculate the impact strength, the free this. So uh, just uh, for a quick summary, and uh, these uh, three millimeter thick samples uh, have about 60 joule at ambient temperature, once you go to zero degree C cold, you have a 30 joules. And the good news is they are presenting a zero brittle waste. So you, we have had a duped out failure, and, uh, but no, they are not break like a glasses at ambient temperature and a zero degree C. We need a bit further on the minus 40 degree C. Yeah, unfortunately, this 80% contents just gave us a very poor result. Yeah. So we have had a high uh, brittle list and a uh, very low impact stress. So again, at the end of the day, we're not considering use 
green plant AD to make the large water tanks or to replace existing applications. This is just something for you to consider. You can come in with a high content of recycle. Out of non-local PE, we use for general purpose applications. Yeah, so that's a terminology, general purpose we are promoting. And then, you know, after this uh, scientific study, we come up with some better, and uh, yeah, we want to make it more representable. Um, so uh, in this particularly hex bin, it's happened to be my little bin now, so it survived the impact test. So I cut the lid off, put it on my desk, so I'm you know, using it as my office little bin. And uh, I, can pro I can probably say, you know, we had at least eight recycling bottle, 100 plus uh, bread bags. Sorry, let's just uh, maybe play this again. It's a very uh, short video. As you can see some them on this side, so we tried both sides. Uh, this job was done in the office on a table. We find it's too easy. Uh, so we took it out of our office, in front of our office, hammered it further, yeah. Almost tried uh, all the six slides, so he survived. So this is a demonstration, you know, it's a qualified general purpose application material at uh, 80%. But again, you know, we do have a sufficient data of, uh, you know, from 10% up to 90%. The lower contents will bring you better mechanical performance, so it could open doors um, to this uh, higher end application. So uh, we love to uh, work with uh, our colleagues, uh, customers in this region to develop this concept. So of course, uh, like I briefly mentioned, from past until now, we use uh, virgin rotor resin plus off-cut rejected articles, powder, and applied rotor molding parts. And uh, sometimes we just uh, reuse the 100% of this to make the product. Here is a laboratory uh, mold we have in Brisbane lab. So it has a very sophisticated design, different metal insert, different surface finishing. This uh, product uh, in this picture has uh, roughly 50% of its uh, off cuts from our existing customer. So um, yeah, we were a little bit worried about the mobility, you know, that sort of things. So uh, we started our first batch with this uh, mold. So the mode itself, the product looks perfect, so we released that thing to that batch to our customer. So we try to do regularly check, uh, not only on the existing particle size distribution, melting flow index, rheology, we try to mold the product, the powder, before we release it. So yeah, it, this mold has really helped us a lot, you know, for developing a new grade. So it just to give you all this information portability from in a snapshot. Okay, so after what we uh, quickly discussed about what's happening now or what has been happening, uh, let's talk about the future trend uh, for this world. So what we call bio-based alternative, and in our term we call green policy. So um, it has a, a good, you know, uh, carbon dioxide footprint, and uh, at the end of the day, we're talking about the virgin PE resin. You know, and our customer can just use it for the existing water tank application, for example. So it will have all these qualification standards, and uh, just uh, this uh, virgin resin. They are not from this uh, fossil oil resource, yeah. So they are sustainable resource. So, for example, you know. Back to 2011, 2012, we were working with a supplier from South America. They gave us a sugar can based PE. And at this stage, a few years later, our supplier in Europe started giving us a bio resource uh, rotomolding polyethylene grain. So we can, technically speaking, utilize using 100% green PE. So the supplier in Europe, they are using. Um, wasted oil, wasted food, to convert them into ethylene. And the ethylene put in the reactor within the right polymer, 
get to your C6, C4 root model of LLDP resins. So I believe Kranos has similar technology coming. So uh, yeah, let's wait and see what uh, this industry will evolve into. So um, yeah, like I briefly mentioned, as we speak in Europe, we have a um, 100% green PE. Yeah. It just comes as a rotor molding grade. We can just use this straight away. Yeah. No different to the existing one we are using. So um, here is the questions our customer always ask. Oh, it's a green polymer. What's the moldability like? Uh, you know, what's the shrinkage? What's the, mm -hmm. the crystallinity? Is it a lot moldable? So to demonstrate this, you know, after we have done some work in the lab, we send the powder to our customers uh, in Europe. So they basically made some of the fantastic, uh, good-looking application out of the existing mold. So their feedback is, well, if you don't tell me it's a green polymer, I would say that's just the normal powder you supply us. And uh, apart from, yeah, it's the green color, yeah. And we made it on purposely to promote this uh, green concept. So the question, as a disclosed answer, you know, when did the matrix polymer start in this green polymer? Back to 2011. And uh, some of you may remember in 2012, uh, from Leon, we actually had this uh, product in our matrix stand. Yeah. So uh, again, last but not least, let me quickly go to the boring techniques. Uh, for example, at that stage, 2012, we have a grade called Renew 21. It has 25% of green <coughs> resource toluene. So the impact at ambient temperature is in line with our existing, we call butane general purpose. And the minus 40, you dropped a little bit, but still good enough. Yeah. So uh, we have a customer in UK, Excelsior, not far away from Manchester. I visit them very often. You know, they even made a toolbox out of it. So very good quality. Okay, a quick summary. So uh, we came to work with our customer, you know, to reuse the off-cut or the reject articles. And we firmly believe this uh, re-blend concept is a good solution to reuse single-use plastic. Yeah, so let's save the world together by utilizing this re-blend concept. And uh, of course, we are working closely with upstream uh, suppliers. So we need this uh, sustainable developed uh, green PE. Yeah. So let's carry on saving the world. Thank you very much. Thank you, Leigh. Very passionate about the rotor molding uh, polymers, isn't it? Um, I think you snuck into a bit of over time there, but uh, thanks for the attention. Uh, we, we've all made it to lunch, so. Um, Matrix Polymers sponsored lunch. Just like to thank Arma for allowing us the opportunity of sponsoring the lunch. Um, our support to Arma is very important to us. We appreciate it. Um, a little bit of housekeeping. I'll just hand over, and uh, we can get get on our way down to lunch. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.